Welcome to my RD journey. I'm Felicia, owner and registered dietitian at Peraz Nutrition. Setting professional boundaries in your practice can be pretty tough. I mean, setting them can be pretty easy, but enforcing them is usually the hard part. So I'm gonna talk about three key tips and that involves three key questions that I usually ask myself to set professional boundaries and really stick to them. So the first question to ask yourself is what really matters to you? And so when you're thinking about setting up your professional boundaries, you wanna tie that back to your values. So I value spending time with my family. I value spending time with my children or whoever it might be. And you kind of connect those boundaries. So when I set a professional boundary and I connect that to a value, it really helps me to enforce that boundary. So I am completely guilty of checking emails during my me time. And one thing I remind myself when I kind of fall into this trap is, is my client checking emails at the dinner table from their dietitian? Usually no, they're kind of setting the phone aside and if they're checking anything, it's not anything from me. And so just take a step back from that. They usually say, well, then it's not worthwhile for me to focus on sending this right now because it's crossing a professional boundary for me and kind of letting that boundary I set to be too flexible. And I know that this is not gonna help me as a clinician. The second thing I ask myself is what I want my day to look like. So when I set out my schedule, I think about how I wanna structure my clients. So there's some days where I'll kind of chunk my clients. So I have maybe five or six in the morning and then I have a break in the afternoon and maybe one client at night. And then usually if I have a pretty heavy client load day, the next day is more of like a flexible day where I might not see clients or only, I only see one or two. Now, it sounds great, but that's where the boundaries come in because sometimes I'll get clients who wanna reschedule, clients who need to move their appointment time, and that's where I have to say to myself, I created this kind of professional boundary and this schedule for myself. And now it's different to be flexible here and there, but when you start to have, you know, this overrun of what you want in your schedule and now how it looks after the fact. So if I start scheduling clients and rescheduling clients during this kind of like me time or on a day where I'm planning to kind of work on my business and not in my business, I end up feeling like super stressed out and kind of like burnt out. And so that's not really helping anybody. And so this is where I need to kind of reinforce that boundary um, and remind myself that, you know, if a client needs to reschedule and I can't fit them in for two weeks, then, then so be it. And to be honest, I haven't lost any clients where they weren't willing to wait for a session. Um, so again, you gotta set those boundaries, but remember to enforce them and don't compromise your schedule, especially if you know it's gonna end up kind of working you to the bone and overburdening you in a sense that will reduce your, how effective you are as a dietitian. And the last thing you have to ask yourself is how are you gonna communicate what you need? So when I'm working with clients, I have very particular boundaries that I set up. And just a few of these might be not answering voicemail or emails after seven o'clock. I respond to those the next day and I let my clients know that. So if they do text me at 7.30, you know, don't expect a response until the next day, usually in the morning. I'll also have a, I also have boundaries set in place in terms of how I'm gonna to respond to calls or emails on the weekend. And so I usually let my clients know I don't respond typically to calls or um, emails on the weekend. I'll get back to them on Monday. And it can be really easy to want to respond to someone or check in with someone. And if maybe you work on Saturday mornings, that could be something that fits into your boundaries. Uh, but for me, I know that I need to kind of take a step back from you know, clients and the business aspect of it and work on some other things or just have me time. And so when I let those things kind of overlap too much, I just feel like I'm working all the time. Another boundary I have set is in terms of how I respond to clients. So I always respond uh, to voicemails within 48 hours and usually it's sooner, but I like clients to know that so they have an expectation ahead of time. And in communicating this, so you gotta obviously set the boundary, but you have to communicate that with your client. So I have this in my policies and procedures form, and then I also talk to clients about this on our initial call together. So maybe that's a freebie session, or maybe that's the initial consult, but I make sure that I touch base with them to let them know, here's what the boundaries are, they're in my policies, and you know, people aren't gonna remember it. So if they're kind of pushing your boundary um, and you don't get back to them right away and they're kind of maybe hounding you about something, just let them know, hi, I'm sorry that I couldn't get back to you in time. Um, my you know, policy is that I usually get back to clients on Monday if it's a Saturday. And sometimes you need to reinforce those boundaries with clients, you know, especially as your relationship kind of grows um, and that partnership grows, they might kind of be asking a little bit more of you. 
And that's where it's really key to kind of be firm, but also be gentle in how you communicate those boundaries with a client. Another policy I have and kind of boundary to say the least is that I don't accept clients with social media on my personal pages, but I will for business. So often I'll still have clients sending me requests on like personal social media pages and I'll just kind of redirect them to the business page. And again, I just kind of want to separate that personal and that professional aspect. So these are just three quick questions to kind of ask yourself when you're thinking about setting those initial boundaries, especially if you're in private practice and even more so if you're working solo as a dietitian. Uh, those boundaries can be really important so you are working on your business at the same time as working in your business as in seeing clients and working on programs. So. Hopefully this was helpful, and if it was, drop me a comment below. Let me know maybe what boundaries you have set in your practice, or maybe what ones you're considering adding. And maybe if you're struggling with enforcing your boundaries, let me know what's kind of the hang up for you. And thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more videos like it.